Okay, I think we can begin. Uh, uh, hi, everybody. It's a great pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Misu Yu of Chungbuk National University, Republic of Korea. Uh, before here, she, uh, she was uh, uh, in various places, beginning with the University of Pennsylvania, where she got a PhD, and San Diego. And she also spent time in the University of Vienna, uh, as well as several universities in Korea before uh, getting this job. Uh, I think she, I think she's just joined. She'll be speaking on elliptic book and file numbers. Uh, this is a this is a topic which was uh, earlier uh, presented by Yosef uh, in our seminar. So this is the second talk in the year. all yours, Miss. Oh hi. Okay, thanks a lot for introduction, and also thanks a lot for giving me a chance to speak at this seminar. As um. As it's written in the um, advertisement email, this research topic is not very like uh, state of the art um, research, per se. But so I have to apologize if you are expecting some recent development in this area. But uh, I'll just go over what we have found in the work theory um, direction in terms of making the elliptic analogs. And this result is going to work with Michael Strasser. So this, this is the outline of what I'm going to talk in this, um, in this time. So I'll introduce what the rook theory is, and then I'll make the Q analog of the original rook theory. And then I'll make the elliptic analogs by using the elliptic weights. And then I'll switch a gear a little bit and consider the perfect matches. And in, as an application, uh, I'll get some hypergeometric summation identities from the root theory identities. So let me introduce what the root theory is. The root theory was introduced by Kaplansky and Riordan in 1946, and then further developed by Riordan. So what we're going to consider is this n by n grid. So I'm going to use this notation bracket of n to denote the set of uh, positive integers from one to n. And we just choose a finite subset of this n by n grid and we call it a board. So we don't have any conditions for choosing a subset of the grid for the moment. And then we say, uh, two rooks attack each other if they are in the same row or same column. So if we say placing k non-attacking rooks in the board B, that means we're placing at most one rook in a column or row. So in this example, this act, the cross uh, represents a rook. And we see that the x here is only one rook in the first column and the bottom row. In the the second one also, and the third one. And curly n sub k denote the set of all non-attacking k work placements in the board B. And the cardinality of this set is going to be called the case book number of B. And if you just consider this n by n grid, the entire board, I mean the board, not the board, but the entire n by n grid, then if you place n non-attacking rooks, then that can be corresponded to a permutation of n elements. So basically uh, placing n rooks in n by n grid gives one permutation. In that sense, consider a permutation and if only k of them lies on the board B, then we count those permutations and uh, we call that number to be the case hit number of the board B. And then here is this um, uh, theorem proved by Kaplansky and Riordan in 1946, which connects the gener generating function of the hit numbers and, and certain uh, summation of case book number and some uh, factorial. So this uh, identity is very nice in, in, the, in the sense of combinatorics. And uh, you know, let me show you one example. Let's say you want to count the number of derangements. Derangement is a permutation which does not have a fixed point. 
to, in a sense of placing a permutation in as a root placement. If a root is on the diagonal cell, that means sigma of i goes to i. So that gives up a fixed point in terms of the permutation. So the arrangement is going to be a root placement of n, n uh, elements and n rooks, so that non, no rooks are in the diagonal cells. So to, uh, to use this Kaplansky and Riordan theorem, we're going to choose the diagonal cells as the board. And then the, the number of derangements, E of n is going to be the zero skin number, in other words, with k equals zero. And then here we have n many cells in the diagonal. So the case room number R sub k is going to be just choosing uh, the number of ways of choosing k cells among the n cells, which is just n, n choose k. So I replace R sub k by this uh, binomial coefficient n choose k. And this is just the Kaplansky and Riordan theorem with R sub k replaced by this binomial coefficient. And that can be simplified as the second line here. And to get the case, uh, the zero skin number, we just place z equals zero. Then in the left-hand side, you only have this h sub zero. And then on the right-hand side, by placing z equals zero, we get this summation. So that gives the number of derangements um, as this nice summation formula. So there are many ways of get, getting this summation formula, but uh, in terms of the root theory, this, this number comes very easy. And also this uh, Kaplansky and Wildern theorem can be used to compute those kind of uh, permutations with some conditions. So basically by giving the, uh, by choosing the board cleverly so that the conditions of the permutation can be satisfied, we can compute the number of permutations with certain conditions very easily by using this identity. So well, now we're going to give some conditions for the board. Before we didn't have any conditions for the board, but now we're going to consider the board starting from the bottom cell. So to denote those uh, boards, I, I'm going to use this notation, B of the eyes, where B eyes are the column height of the ice column. So this uh, notation basically means in the ice column, we have uh, B I many cells, starting from the bottom up to the i uh, cell in the, in the height. So if a board has this representation for some bi's, that means we start from the bottom and then goes up to bi in the ice column. In that case, the board is called a skyline board. Uh, because of this notation, we already know that the, uh, the board start from the bottom. So the bi is only uh, determine how the board looks above. So that's why it's called the skyline board. And in addition, if the eyes are uh, weakly increasing, so the column heights are weakly increasing to the right, in that case, the board is called the forest board. And of course, the BIs could be zero. So in this right example, the first column has height zero. We don't have any uh, cells in the first column. We start uh, from the second, with height two, three, and fives. So this goldman joich and White theorem considers only forest boards. And the, um, the theorem says that if you sum up the product of n minus k root number with k falling factorial, and you sum them over uh, k values from zero to n, then the result factorizes nicely as in the left-hand side. And that result is from uh, Goldman, Joyce, and White. And the way of uh, proving this identity is by attaching this n by z board below this n by n grid or the board, uh, the first board B. So we extend the board and then you place n, n many rooks in this extended board in two different ways. The left-hand side counts the way of placing n rooks column by column. So you start placing one rook in the first uh, column, 
Then you have Z plus B one many choices for the first column. The first column. Then if you place a rook in the first, then uh, the cells to the right of this first rook is not uh, are not possible for placing the second. So for the for the second rook, there are Z plus B two minus one many choices and so on and so forth. So you place n many rooks starting from the left column, leftmost column to the right. And the right hand side, uh, you place n minus k rooks on the board and then k many rooks below the, uh, this attached board. And so you, uh, so this R sub, uh, R sub n minus k, the n minus k rook number counts the number of ways of placing n minus k rooks on the board. And then Z uh, falling factorial counts the number of ways of placing K rooks in the extended part. And by multiplying them, we get this uh, number of ways placing N rooks so that N minus K rooks are in the board and K many rooks in the, uh, in the attached board. So you sum uh, those number over K goes from zero to N, then you count all the possible uh, ways of placing N rooks. But since we are, just placing n rooks in all, all possible ways. The two, two sides should be the same and that proves the identity. So this is basically the identity that, that we are going to make uh, Q analogs and elliptic analogs. So let's make some applications with the um, boldman joich white theorem. And this ST sub n denotes a staircase board the ice column has height i minus one. And so bi is i minus one and you, uh, you put bi equals i minus one in the goldman joich and y theorem, then you get this identity. Z to the n equals uh, this okay. n minus k. Misu, I have a, a question, a talk question. Uh, because uh, it, uh, it's some time that uh, we worked on this together. I just want to ask, is there a immediate reason why this argument fails for a skyline board? So if, if you don't have a ferrous board, why would the proof fail? The proof on the previous slide. Oh, because, because here we are kind of considering that you, um, um, you don't, so because two, two rooks attack if they are in the same row, right? Yes. But if you don't know if the cell to the right is in the board or not, then you cannot say the, so I mean- Okay, it should be always a subset of the- Yes. Uh, okay, so you go from right to left or from- uh, From the left to right. From left to right, and it should be always a subset. That's right. Choice, okay, that's fine. That's a okay, okay. Right, so- Yep. So the the uh, the reason why we are considering the first board is because to make sure that the cells to the right of a rook are also included in the board. And so in the woodman joich y theorem, in the case of the staircase board becomes like this. In the left hand side we have z to the n, and in the right hand side we are sort of expanding z to the n in terms of the k ruling factorial. But this identity is already known that the connecting coefficient is going to be the Stirling number of the second kind. In other words, the Stirling number of the second kind has this property that it becomes the connecting coefficient of z to the n and k falling factorial. So if that's the case, then the n minus k rook placement should be uh, connected to the Stirling number of the second kind. I mean, what that means in combinatorially. And combinatorially, the Stirling number of the second kind gives the number of set partitions, the case of set partitions of this bracket n. So if there is this um, equality, that means the k replacement should correspond to n minus k set partition of n. And the way we read the set partition from the replacement is as follows. So here is a rook in the ith row and uh, jth column, or, or first row and second column. That means one and two are in the same set partition. And two and five are also in the same. So one, two, five are in the same set partition. 
and three and four are in the same set partition. So we have three rooks and we got two set partition, I mean, two subsets for the set partition of N. So that explains um, this correspondence, at least in this example, but that's in general true. And also by considering whether there is a rook or not in the last column, we can get this uh, recursion formula satisfied by the starting number of the second kind. Uh, we can also consider this uh, rectangular shape board with height n minus one for each column, and then apply uh, the goldman joich white theorem for this board, then we get this identity. But then in this case, in the left-hand side, we have a rising factorial, and um, the expansion we use this k falling factorial. And then in this case, the connecting coefficient is known to be the la number. I mean, the, uh, this is the property of the la number. So then the n minus k replacement of this rectangular shape board should be the, the la number. And combinatorial description of the la number is also the set partition of uh, bracket n. But in this case, um, the set subset of the, uh, I mean, the set partition, the elements in the set partition are linearly ordered. So not only that we consider just set a uh, subset of sets, but we also order the elements within the subset. And in this case, the n minus k group number can be explicitly computed as uh, shown in the slide. So the la number also can be read from this uh, root placement. And also by considering whether there is a root or not in the last column, we can get this recursion formula satisfied by the LAN numbers. Um, now we can also consider the file placement. In this case, we say that um, two rooks can be, uh, can be placed in the same row, but not in, in the same column. So in each column, we can have at most one rook, but we use the condition that um, having only one or zero row, uh, rooks in, the, in each row. And then placing k rooks, uh, non-attacking rooks in that sense is called the file placement. And the cardinality of this file placement is called the case file number. Um, as opposed to the n non-attacking book placement corresponds to a permutation. And in this case, file placement of n rooks can be considered as a function from bracket of n to bracket of n. So the, uh, the, uh, the label of columns is going to be the numbers in the domain. And the uh, position of rook is going to be the function value. So since the functions should be defined, uh, the function values are should, uh, defined only one function value for each element in the domain. That's why we, we can have at most one rook in each column, but the function values can be the same. So that's why we can have more than one rook in the, in the rows. So in the same sense, among those uh, functions f, if only k of the rooks are in the board, we, we count all those functions and say that's the case fit number of the board. And this file uh, numbers and uh, fit numbers are considered by Garcia and Wimmer in 1986. And they came up with this uh, identity, which is similar to the identity of hit numbers and root numbers. And also in this case, um, we don't have to consider first board, but we, it's enough to consider skyline boards for this product formula. And for the file numbers, the summation of uh, file number times e to the k factorizes as in the left-hand side. And since we don't have, uh, we don't have to consider, I mean, the rooks, um, so, the cells to the right of a rook are also possible available for the next rook. So we, only, we just have this 
this Z plus BI uh, factor in the left-hand side. And the way of proving this uh, factorization formula is the same. You attach N times Z volt below the volt B and consider all possible ways of placing N loops. Uh, the left-hand side counts column by column placing and the right-hand side, uh, you place N minus K books on the board and then K books in the bottom. And here, the reason why you have Z to the K in the, in the right-hand side is also because we can uh, use all Z many columns in each, um, in each column. Um, as an application, we still consider this staircase board. And let's say you apply this Garcia Remer theorem for this board. Then in the left hand side, now we have n rising factorial. So this theorem gives a monomial expansion of the rising factorial. But the connecting coefficient of this case is known to be uh, this is the, the property of the starting number of the first kind. That means the bar placement uh, should give the, the combinatorial description for the starting number of the first kind, which is uh, the number of permutations with k cycles. In other words, if you have n minus k uh, five placement here, it should be five. This is Rupert. Uh, the five placement corresponds to a, per, a permutation of n elements with k cycles. And uh, the way of reading the k-cycles of a permutation from the rook placement is as follows. So here we have a rook in first row and uh, column three. That means in, in the sense of permutation, one goes to three. But then here is another rook in uh, row one and column seven. So the seven, one goes to seven in the end. So seven comes between one and three. So in terms of the permutation, one goes to seven, and then seven goes to three, as it's written in the right here. And there is a rook in row two and column four, that means two goes to four in the cycle notation. And five goes to eight, but there is another rook to the right, so five goes to nine. So nine should come between five and eight. So in, in the end, five goes to nine, and then nine goes to eight. There is another uh, cycle. And six was never uh, counted by a rook. That means six makes a single turn in terms of the cycle. So there are five rooks in the five placement, and it gives four cycles in the permutation. So that's about the original rook theory. Now I'll make Q analogs. Uh, Q analogs are defined by Garcia and Remer in 1986. So for the Q analogs, we only consider four sport. So the column heights are weakly increasing to the right. And now we, uh, we say that a rook cancels, um, cancels the cells to the right of a rook and cells below it. The reason why you consider for support is because the rook has to cancel the cells to the right. So we need to have the cells, I mean, we need to make sure that the cells to the right of a rook should be included in the board. So we do this cancellation and count the cells which are not canceled, also not containing any rooks. And you say use of B is the number of such uh, cells. And then the case, uh, the Q analog of the case book number is going to be summation of Q to the U over all possible K book placements uh, in the board B. So this is the Q analog of the uh, book number. And then with this definition, Garcia and Remer define a proof that there is this factorization formula with this Q book number. And everything is replaced by uh, this Q integer, where bracket of n sub Q is one minus Q to the n over one minus Q. And this K for, uh, falling factorial is also the same with 
um, z uh, z replaced by z to the uh, z sub q with this definition. And also, um, we can, um, by considering whether there is a local or not in the, in the last column, or say you have a force board B, and then say you attach another column to the right of the board B, which has, um, which has at most height of the, the heights in the board B, then by considering whether there is a local or not in the attached column, we are able to get this recursion formula for the two of numbers. And there is a remark about the Q analog of uh, the heat numbers. So upon the introduction of the Q analogs of the loop number, Arzia and Remer, they didn't know how to define the Q heat numbers. I mean, they didn't have any idea of how to define the statistic for the Q heat numbers. So whether they defined Q heat numbers by this identity, they define this Q heat number um, as a polynomial which satisfies this identity. And then they just prove that they are Q positive. And later in 1998, Dorkin and Hagland independently found statistics for the Q heat numbers satisfying this identity. So Dorkin's statistic and Hagelin's statistic are different, but they uh, both satisfy this identity and also the relation of both. Um, also, we cannot make Q analog of the phi numbers. And in the phi number case, the rooks cancel only the cells below. So we, uh, it's enough to consider a skyline board rather than forest board as far as the phi placement goes. So say we, uh, we say a rook cancels the cells below. And the way of defining U sub V is the same. You, can, you do all the cancellation and count the cells which are not cancelled and not contain any rook. And then you sum um, Q to the U over all the possible K phi placements. And that's going to be the Q analog of the phi number. And then this uh, factorization formula also holds with this definition. And everything is also replaced by this Q integer. And again, by considering, so let's say, let's say you have a skyline board B with B, and then you attach uh, a column with height M to the right of board B. Then by considering whether there is a rook or not in the last column, you get this uh, recursion formula of the case uh, file number, Q analog of the case file number. So those are the historic, um, Wizards, and let's make elliptic analogs. So we need to know what an elliptic function is. The function is called elliptic if it's meromorphic and doubly periodic. So this is uh, it's for the sorry, sorry, I have a question about the Q analog. Okay. Uh, so uh, what you uh, what you obtained for the you obtained maybe some Q analog for uh, uh, Stirling number. With that's this. right. If, that's right. If you um, use this identity here, and then still use the board, uh, the circle case board B um, as T sub n for here, then you get Q analog the solid number. So it corresponds some uh, uh, noun uh, Q analog for Stirling was a new one. It's not new. It's a known known Q solid number. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, in the same way here as well, if you just use the uh, staircase board for here, then you get the Q analog of the solid number of the first kind. Um, yes, it gives the sterling numbers by Q sterling numbers by Collitz, uh, considered by Collitz and uh, Gould, and yeah, with the usual, the, the classical ones. So. That's right, yeah, it's yeah. not new. Okay, thank you. Um, 
So elliptic functions, uh, the, the good thing is that elliptic functions can be built from portions of data functions. So we only need to consider portions of data functions where modified Jacobi data functions are defined as follows. So this first line is a definition of uh, Jacobi data function. And the second line is just a notation for product of n many data functions. And these last two relations are uh, convenient relations to deal with the data functions, I mean, the computation of data functions. Um, but the important thing is that we're going to construct elliptic functions by just considering portions of data functions. And we also define the data shifted factorial as follows. And these are the elliptic analog of the, um, the Q-POC hammer symbol. So these are just notations for uh, the shifted factorial. And this, uh, this notation is product of uh, shifted factorials, uh, and many uh, product of shifted factorials where K goes from one to M. And the reason why I say that's an elliptic analog of the Q-POC hammer symbol is because if we say P equals zero, then this uh, shifted factorial is nothing but the A, uh, this Q-POC hammer symbol, which is a product of one minus A times two to the I, where I goes from zero to N minus one. And these are the elliptic weights that we're going to consider for the elliptic loop numbers. Um, this small w uh, and big w are defined as the quotient of data functions as written in the slide. And this big w function is a uh, product of small w weight where i goes from one to k. These are elliptic analogs of the q number. So if you say p goes to zero, a goes to zero, and then b goes to zero in this order, then this small w becomes q and big W converges to Q to the K. So this is really just the Q um, uh, Q weight. And big W is a uh, product of K many Qs. But since we are considering this elliptic weight, big W is really, uh, we need big W. But these complicated definitions are um, carefully defined by, uh, oh, before I explain that, I need to define another thing. So we define this elliptic analog uh, number n by um, this portion of data functions. And this bracket n satisfies this identity, n equals bracket of n minus one plus big W of n minus one. And that's also an, an elliptic analog of the um, Q n number. So n sub q equals uh, bracket of n minus one plus q to the n minus one. So basically that's an elliptic analog of uh, that recursion formula. And with big W of zero equals one, this recursion formula uniquely defines bracket n uh, elliptic number. But what I wanted to say was that this um, complicated definition of elliptic weights are um, defined by Michael Schlosser in 2007 upon um, the introduction of the elliptic binomial coefficients. So he defined this uh, elliptic analog of the binomial coefficients as this quotient of uh, data functions. And then he, he uh, proved this elliptic binomial coefficients can be interpreted combinatorially as a summation of lattice pass, uh, the summation of weights of the lattice pass from the origin to uh, k comma n minus k by giving this elliptic weights on the steps of the uh, pass. So these elliptic weights are not, um, not new things, but they are from the result of Michael Schlosser. But in here, uh, the big W depend on both of uh, x and y coordinates, but in our example, uh, our setting, it only has one parameter. Um, 
For here, it depends on both of X and Y coordinates. And let me just explain what Michael found in his work. So this uh, elliptic analog of the binomial coefficient is, is summation of rate of the pass, where the pass has this, uh, uh, the steps in the pass has the weight, this big W on the horizontal step and one in the vertical step. So you multiply all the weights on the steps to get the weight of the pass and sum them up over all the possible paths from the origin to k comma n minus k, then the result is the same as the um, elliptic analog of the um, binomial coefficient. And our elliptic number is nothing but the binomial coefficient with k replaced by one. And then uh, we can make everything elliptic so this setting is the same as before. And the only thing that we need to do is giving elliptic weights for the uh, book number. And here is the way of defining the elliptic weight. So uh, the cancellation of the books are the same. And for each uncancelled cell, i comma j, we give this weight w of i minus j minus r of i comma j, where r of i comma j is the number of rooks in p which are in the northwest region of uh, the position of the rook. And the way of defining this rook is um, so that the product formula for the um, rook numbers uh, holds nicely. So these are carefully defined. So we can expect that the product formula holds. Or let's see an example of how, how, how we compute the weight. For example, uh, we place two rooks in this entire board. And this first rook cancels the cells to the right and below. And in this corner, a uh, rook doesn't cancel anything. So there are three uncanceled cells not containing any rooks. So this rook, uh, this uncancelled cell has this weight, uh, W of two minus one, minus one, um, because there is this uh, rook here. And then two comma two cell also two minus two minus one. And then this one, three minus two minus one. So that's going to be the weight of this uh, rook placement. And we still consider the full board three by three. And then let's say we place three rooks in this board. And there are these possible uh, six possible placements. And if you compute um, all the weights of six possible rook placements and add them, then you get this three times two with certain shifts for the uh, two powers in A and B. But it kind of have uh, three factorial kind multiple uh, product, but that's in general true. So in general, for the entire n by n grid, if you place n many rooks in this entire board, then the nth rook number, the elliptic analog of the nth rook number is going to be um, product of n and n minus one up to one with certain shifts for the two powers of A and B's. So this is the product formula. As I said before, this, um, the, the way of choosing the, the weights for the uncancelled cells are arranged so that this identity holds. So this kind of is a result expected before. But the nice thing is that we have this product formula and also, as I said before, the nth room number uh, from this identity, if you place, a, if you say z equals zero, then we are able to get this nth room number as this product of um, elliptic breaking numbers. And if, it, if the board is the entire n by n grid, then the nth room number is this uh, uh, n times n minus one up to one with certain shifts. 
And the way of proving the theorem is the same um, as before. But the, the important thing is that if you place i, I minus one loops in the left columns, and then if you place the i loop in the next column, then the weight should be sort of um, should be connected with this nice property. And this is why we are able to get the product formula because starting from the leftmost column, we place loops one by one. And since the weight, the uh, summation of the weights are related uh, to the weight of the I minus one loop placements, WT of two, with this bracket um, multiplication. So that's why we can get this product formula from starting from the leftmost column to the rightmost column. So this is the key ingredient, ingredient lemma to be able to prove the product formula. And having this, it's not very hard to prove the product formula. It's just the, the same fashion. And also by considering, so we can attach another uh, column to the right of the board. And by considering whether there is a loop or not in the last column, we get this recursion formula for the elliptic analog of the case loop number. And so in this case, that's where if you consider the staircase board, we get this elliptic analog of the Stirling numbers. But this Stirling number was um, previously considered by uh, Michael and Sophie. Sophie was a former student of Michael. So they use, uh, they started from different community for your uh, setting, but they uh, end up having the same elliptic Stirling numbers. And the reason why they are the same is because they, they satisfy the same recursion formula. So again, by considering whether there is a rook or not in the last column, we can get this uh, recursion, uh, recursive formulas that satisfied by these elliptic starting numbers. And since uh, the elliptic starting numbers defined by Sophie and Michael, they also satisfy the same recursion formula, so that's why they are the same. And also we can make the elliptic analog of the five numbers. Everything is the same as before, but now uh, the way of defining the weights of the uncancelled cells are a bit sim simpler. So say we have an uncancelled cell in the i comma j cell, then the weight of this cell is w of one minus j. It only depends on the, uh, the second coordinate, and the, the reason why it, of that is because you know only um, the root only cancels the cells below, so it only uh, depends on the column coordinates. And as I said before, uh, the weight is carefully defined so that this product formula holds nicely, and this formula of course holds. And the way of proving the product formula is also the same. It's just the routine uh, computation. But the, 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 the reason why this product formula holds it is, as I said before, is because we, we, we define this weight so that the product formula holds. And of course, we get this recursion formula by considering whether there is a rook or not in the last column. We can also obtain elliptic analog of the uh, uh, starting numbers of the first kind. So let's make situation a little bit more general. So let's say we consider the board, which has zero, co uh, zero column height in the first R columns. And then starting from the R plus ones column, or so R plus first column, we have, um, we have column height I minus one or i uh, is between i plus one and n. And then if you consider this board in the product formula of the um, five numbers, then we get this identity in the bottom, but that's the generating function that the r starting number is known to satisfy. In other words, if you consider this board, zero columns in the first R many uh, columns. And then this uh, I minus one height for I in, in this range, 
then the connecting coefficient is the R starting numbers of the first count. And commutatorial description for these R starting numbers is the permutation uh, of an element with K cycles, but the first R numbers are in, in different cycles. For example, here is an example of n equals eight, r equals three, and n minus k equals five. So we have zero height in the first three columns. And then the first column has uh, height three and so on. And if you place this five many books in this port, then that gives this three cycles so that one, two, three are in the different cycles. Of course, if you say R equals, um, R equals one, R equals one, then that gives the original uh, starting numbers of the first kind. And then we can make the elliptic analog of this R starting numbers of the first kind. So basically you use the, this board in the product formula that we obtained uh, in the elliptic uh, setting and this, uh, connecting coefficient can be defined on elliptic analog of the R starting numbers of the first kind. Of course, I didn't explain before, but if, if you consider the product formula of the root placement uh, or elliptic analog of the root placement, then you obtain the R starting number of the, uh, the elliptic analog of the R starting numbers of the second kind. Everything is the same. Okay, now I'm going to switch the DR a little bit and consider the perfect matchings and loop theory. So remember, if you consider n by n grid and placing n many groups in that entire grid, then that gives a, per a permutation of n numbers. But now, um, as, as opposed to considering uh, permutations, we're going to consider a perfect matching of the complete graph with two n vertices. So rather than considering n by n grid, now we're going to consider this board, the upside down staircase board. And this labeling is also important. The start um, is so the ice row has, um, no, ice row starts from the, uh, the ice cell. And then the first row has n minus one cells in the second one, twin minus two, and so on. And there are twin minus one rows so that the last one has only one cell. And then um, in the case of n by n grid of n uh, placement of n many books gives a permutation. Now the this this the um, permutation is correspond to a perfect matching of the complete graph in this setting. So what's a perfect matching? Matching given a graph is just a subset of edges so that um, any common vertices are not chosen. So we just choose edges so that not the same vertices are uh, chosen twice. And complete graph is just the, the matching which covers all the vertices of the graph. So to, to a graph have a perfect matching, there should be a even number of vertices and that's why we have this 2n for the number of vertices. Um, and so consider a perfect matching of this complete graph with 2n vertices and this piece of M is the cells correspond to this per perfect matching. And a loop placement of this board B sub 2N is going to be a subset of um, uh, this placement for a perfect matching of complete graphs. And then curly M sub K is going to be the set of K element loop placements in a sense of this loop placement as a subset of perfect matching. So in terms of placing a, a non-attacking rook in this board, it's, it says follows. If you place a rook in the um, ice row and j column, then you cannot put any 
uh, any more rooks in the same row or column, and also not in the in the in the ice column as well, because we are not allowed to uh, choose two vertices, the common vertices. So if ice row has a rook, then ice column also cannot have another rook. And in this board, a skyline board is uh, is as shown in the in the slide. It starts from the leftmost uh, cell, but the rightmost boundary is doesn't have any condition. But then shifted forest board, I like this. So the width of each row uh, are strictly decreasing so that. Here, the important thing is the uh, cells above the rook are also inside of the port. And that's why we have this um, boundary in the right. So it sort of uh, decreases from the top. And as I said before, if there is a rook in this uh, I comma J cell, then this rook cancels the cells above and to the left. And there's um, also the, uh, the cells in the ice column as well. And we can, we can see that um, because we don't, we don't want to choose four, in terms of the uh, perfect matching, this four, we don't want four to be chosen again. So that's why we don't want to choose any books in here. I placed any books in here. Um, so we do this cancellation and we count the number of uncanceled cells in this saying or not containing any loops. And then we define this M sub K to be two to the uh, summation of two to the U over all the possible K loop placements. Then there is this uh, nice product formula, which was this, uh, proved by Hegel and Daniel in 2001. And the difference is that here, uh, this falling factorial consecutive factors before by two, not one, as before. And the reason why we have these two differences is because one look cancels two, two columns. And that's why we have these two differences. Then we can make the situation a little bit more general. Um, so we can sort of extend the width of each stair by L. And then um, placing a rook can be um, considered as, um, as an edge, as uh, choosing an edge in, the, in, the, in this graph. So we say a graph is lazy if it only contains edges of this form, J comma K, where J is of the form one plus s times l, where s is uh, in this set. In other words, so we are placing one loop in each, at most one loop in each uh, row. That's what it means by, um, you know, only considering edges of this form. So we're just placing at most one loop in each row. And a row placement of this board is a partial matching of this l is graph. And everything is the same. And also a rook in I comma J cell cancels the cells above in the same column to the left, and then the cells in the I column. Then you, we have this um, generalization of the product formula for this, uh, this rook board, which is a little bit of generalization of the product formula of Hagelund and Yemen. But we can also make the elliptic analog of this, uh, of this product formula. But in this case, we need to relabel the rows and columns. So rather than starting from one from the top, we start from the bottom. So we start from the bottom one to N. And also the column labels start from the rightmost column. And it starts from one to N times L. And we label the cells in this labeling. And I comma J to the W means we are using this labeling, uh, which are carefully defined for the elliptic product formula for it. 
And here is a, a way of defining the weights for the uncanceled cells. And so this weight of uncanceled cell in the I, J cell with respect to the new labeling of the cells is W of I plus J minus one minus two times R minus S, where R is the number of groups in the uh, placement, which are positioned southeast of the book, such that two, two columns canceled by these books are to the right of the column J. And S is the number of rooks in P, which are also in the southeast region of this book, such that only one canceled column is to the right of the column J. So if two canceled cells uh, columns are to the right of the rook, then you, uh, you subtract twice of the, the number of the rooks. And then if only one cancels column is to the right of the rook, then you just subtract one of them. Let me show an example of what I mean by that. This square means there is a rook here. And we consider this southeast region of this rook. And for example, this rook here in row 13 and column 19, then it cancels this column and the column 13, but this column 13 is not, not to the right of this rook. So it, this rook is counted at, uh, as S. But the rook here in the last column, it cancels column 22 and column 16, and both are to the right of this rook. So this rook is counted as R. So it's going to um, contribute one in here. So you do uh, you you count Rs and Ss in that sense and give the weights for the uncanceled cells, and there will give the uh, elliptic weight for the placement. And using that weight, we get this uh, product formula for the um, group placements and the matching fence. Again, the, the way of defining the weight is so that the product formula holds. So this is kind of expected. And if you uh, consider n many loop placement, then give, in other words, if you place z equals zero in this product formula, then you get this uh, value for the n loops and loop placements. And if you consider the entire board, uh, then the uh, nth room number has this nice product formula. So let's just see how we can get some hypergeometric summation formula from the root theory. So to be able to do that, we need to get let p goes to zero and b goes to zero so that we only have a and q's. So the big, uh, small w, big w, and uh, z number becomes like this. Um, here is again kind of um, generalization of the law numbers. In the law number, we considered n minus one times n boards, but we can sort of uh, make a little bit of generalization and consider this n plus r minus one times n minus r board. And with the, the elliptic weight that we defined before, we are able to get this product formula. But then this product formula in terms of the uh, basic hypergeometries can be written in this way. And if you do this substitution A, B, and C, then we get this, uh, this identity can be written as this, which is known to be the QFOP Celsius summation formula. So from the, uh, the product formula held in the work theory, we are able to get this QFOP Celsius summation. And also in the matching case, if you consider the full shifted first word, then the case matching number has this nice factorization. Of course, this also holds because we say uh, b equals zero and t equals zero. Otherwise, it, does, it doesn't have this nice factorization formula. But then with this mk uh, in the product formula, we can also get this summation identity. And here, if you 
substitute A, B, and C as written in the slide. Then again, we get this cube of Celsius summation. So the uh, cube of Celsius summation identities can be obtained from the product formula holding in the group theory or matching theory. Uh, so that was what I wanted to uh, say. But as I said before, since this was a, an old result, we have made more progress after. So we have made alpha parameter model. This alpha parameter model was considered by Goldman and Hagland. They also, uh, they also called it I creation model. Um, so if I just explain briefly what, I, what it is, if you place a rook in, in a row, then it creates I many sub rows in the, in the row to the right. So it only cancels the bottom, uh, bottom row of this new um, subdivided row so that you, you can still place another rook in this uh, newly added uh, I, rooks, I rows above this um, uh, within the row. And that's why they called it I creation model, but we also call it alpha parameter model because we used alpha rather than I. And um, uh, Wimmer and Michelle, they also consider this augmented rook boards. So uh, for the augmented rook boards, um, we consider two sequences, uh, Bs, which are the height of the board B, but also we consider uh, the sequence of A's and you just add AI many cells above the BIs, and that's how we, we construct an augmented board. So in the augmented board, uh, we also, there are some conditions for placing rooks and uh, the way of canceling the cells. So there are also product formula and everything for the augmented rook board, but we made an elliptic analog of this augmented rook board uh, rook theory. And then also, made an elliptic extension of the J attacking model. The J attacking model means uh, the rook attacks J many, uh, J many rows to the right. So not only that a rook cancels the cells to the right in the same row, but it also cancels J many rows to the right. And uh, also this uh, can be extended to the normal ordering problem. And we made an elliptic extension of that, but um, since I used a lot of time, let me just stop here. Thanks a lot for listening, and that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Vilsi. Uh, this was a great talk. Uh, any queries or questions? I know we are maybe five minutes above time. But give some time for questions. Okay, I wanted to ask a question. Uh, did uh, uh, Hagland or anybody else did uh, the hypergeometric stuff earlier using just the uh, root theory? Not that I know of. Because they were trying, I think, at some point. Mm -hmm. They were trying, but maybe they never succeeded. Well, yeah, I don't know, actually. Okay.